Watch number 42. The man making all these shots is every expert's All-American, Bill Bradley of Princeton. There are many words to describe Bill Bradley, but we will settle for three. Championship, scholarship, and Christian. Bill attended the 10th annual conference of the FCA immediately after graduation in the summer of 65. The Reverend Gary Demarest, a former All-American baseball player, asked him some questions we thought you might like to hear the answers to. Bill, there are always lots of kids uh, across the country who uh when they're discovering that they're a little taller maybe and a little faster than uh, other kids in their age group and so on, decide they want to excel in athletics and particularly in basketball. Uh, what would you say athletically have been some of the most important things in, uh, in becoming a real champion performer? Well, as I see uh, the qualities of a champion performer, uh, not saying that I am a champion performer, but uh, as I see the qualities of a champion performer, there are, are four. One, I think, is a respect for authority. I think that so many uh, young people today disregard a coach's or a teacher's advice and instead uh, go out on their own path. And uh, I always like to think of uh, individuals who listen to coaches as being ones who brush off or brush against those who have the experience and can learn a great deal. Second, I think an important uh, attitude of a champion is that of teamwork and of loyalty. These two, these two are really one and they're inseparable. Uh, third, I think that the most important thing for a champion is, is a discipline, a discipline to pay the price, to practice until the pain is so much that you think you have to quit, but your mind pushes you forward to, uh, to becoming a champion. And the fourth is uh, the most important, I think, and uh, I feel that it's easier to become a champion when you're doing it for someone else, uh, when you're working for the success of, of a coach or of the team and not for your own success. Mm -hmm. uh, now, these are four qualities of, of a champion or attitudes of excellence or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, pr the price must be paid, though, and probably discipline is the hardest one of the, of the four because there was never a great athlete that didn't know pain and that didn't go to a gymnasium or to a football field or to a track day after day after day after day and pay the price of being a champion. Uh, do you feel that these same principles in uh, athletics have a carryover value in your work in the classroom? Yes, sir, uh, very much so. Uh, the most valuable thing that you can take away from the athletic field are, uh, is attitude. And uh, many times the attitudes on the athletic field are similar. For example, the same attitude that makes me stay on a court and shoot until uh, I hit 25 shots in a row. And if I hit 23 in a row and miss the 24th for five times, I still have to shoot till I hit 25. The same attitude that makes me uh, miss dinners because I'm practicing uh, goes over into the academic uh, aspect of my life. And it's this attitude that makes me uh, stay up until I have finished the assignment. And, uh, when I begin to get weary, maybe I have reached the point of diminishing returns, but uh, it's still a matter of disciplining yourself to uh, to pay the price of the goal of achieving excellence, whether it be in athletics or in the classroom. And I think that this can even be paralleled to, to Christianity and the life of, uh, of discipline and of uh, resisting temptation. And, uh, or we can make it even a positive factor of living a life for Christ. And with each challenge that you've met successfully, uh, the life becomes more exciting and, and uh, more successful. Uh, Bill, certainly during these last four years, uh, you have really had to learn this whole business of discipline and pain as you're talking about it. Have there been times when you really just wanted to quit? In basketball? In basketball and in studies. Well, there have been times when uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't like the first two hours on the basketball court because I was missing and because my legs were sore, my stomach hurt, and my shoulder was sore. But uh, there came a point when I did start to hit, and then everything was worthwhile. And uh, 
have to go through this period, I suppose. And in studies, uh, I've been discouraged many, many times about uh, uh, my work and thought that I had done poorly. And uh, the only consolation was that uh, I thought that I'd put in the effort and that all the effort I'd put in uh, failed, well, then that was the best I had. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all aware there's been a good bit of pressure from uh, all kinds of sources uh, to play professional basketball. Uh, you have chosen uh, not to at this time to uh, accept a Rhodes Scholarship and study in England. And uh, I think many of us are very interested in how you feel your faith has helped you in making these decisions and where you see yourself going from here in the light of your Christian commitment. Mm -hmm. Well, as I look at my future, now I see uh, one desire, and that's to be of service to mankind. Mm -hmm through uh, which medium or which profession, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, during the past few months, I've, I've prayed about the future. I've uh, counseled with many people about the future. And uh, I, I think that what, what I hope to achieve in the next two years is a, a greater sense of uh, what I want in the next few years and what I eventually want to do and how I can be of service to mankind. And uh, I think that through my studies there in the next two years and a certain period of quiet and reflection that uh, I will be able to decide which is the best way to uh, serve Jesus Christ in the future. Bill, I know, Bill, you're going to be out uh, this coming summer with a State Department team uh, traveling behind the Iron Curtain. And I imagine that you're looking forward to this experience as an opportunity to extend this kind of acquaintance and fellowship uh, with others. Yes, sir, I am. Uh, I, uh, I think that if I want, learned one thing uh, in the very brief travels that I've had, it's that uh, people are pretty much similar all over the world, and uh, they're, they're moved by the same emotions and the same ideas. And uh, if uh, Christianity can be made real to a person in uh, Budapest or to a person in New York, the, the result is still the same, and that's a changed life. How did you find it uh, in the Olympic Village in Tokyo this past year, Bill? Uh, in terms of uh, freedom to share your faith, uh, say with people of uh, an atheistic, uh, communistic persuasion, did you find some, some freedom of dialogue here? Uh, well, it's, it was open to, uh, to me or to any Christian. It was open to any man that wanted to share his beliefs with other people. Uh, I tried to share mine with, with some uh, in a quiet, uh, unobnoxious way and uh, tried to show them that, that uh, some of the things that motivate my life and, that they all have a Christian basis. Mm -hmm. You found an, an interest and an openness in, uh, in this kind of sharing? Yes, sir. Uh, it, it wasn't uh, to the extent that I was, was an evangelist in the Olympic Village, but it was only through, through quiet talk and, and among uh, teammates, perhaps, uh, and uh, uh, with other people, too. Bill, um, how does your personal Christian commitment and faith relate to your life in athletics? Well, I uh, try to uh, use my athletic life as a means of communication to, uh, to people of what I believe about Jesus Christ and about Christianity. Uh, if in any way through my participation on the field or uh, my uh, reputation off the field as a result of my participation on the field, uh, I can uh, show people the way I live and, and why I live it, then I think it's worthwhile. Uh, Christianity uh, has affected my athletics, I think, in uh, many of the attitudes that I've developed, the willingness to, to pay the price, to accept pain, and to work for a goal which, uh, which uh, uh, might not be achieved in the end, but which is worth working for. Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, do you ever pray to win? No, I never pray to win. Uh, I pray before games, but uh, this is a silent prayer, and and what I pray is that, uh, that I might be given the strength to go out and uh, be a, a good representative of Christianity on the floor that night. And whether this means uh, losing or winning uh, is not the important thing. It means uh, how you conduct yourself on the floor. Because many times a Christian uh, witness can be more powerful in a losing effort uh, than in a winning effort. And so uh, before a game, uh, I pray for, for this strength to, uh, to be a good witness. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say uh, that the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has meant to you personally? 
The Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been the main uh, factor, I'd have to say, in, in my becoming a Christian and in uh, my accepting the Christian life. Uh, it was through uh, inspiration of uh, conferences in the summertime during my high school years and uh, uh, through being touched by uh, the sharing of very personal experiences of great athletes uh, who I'd always admired and, uh, and idolized uh, that I thought about becoming a Christian, that I was uh, moved by their experiences and thought that they had something in life that I'd like to have and uh, thought it would be worth investigating. And thought they had something in life I'd like to have and thought it would be worth investigating. To give you a better idea of what one of those summer conferences are like, we turn to another